Well, here we are once again, and today we're going to be bending some wire, which is the component that will make this actually a cloisonne enamel. Um, so I have, I'm going to be bending 24 karat gold wire today because why not? Because a lot of times the reds and the the purples look a lot better and they are non-reactive to the gold, so I use gold wire for those. Um, obviously it's a little bit more expensive than silver wire and so I have the tiniest little scrap pile as opposed to a huge scrap pile. Um, let me see, what am I doing? Okay, so I have, I'm going to do this design right here and you can see yesterday is what, when I was cutting things out, I've made these, these settings. So this is going to be the base. And I have kind of already prepped out a little piece of paper with the design on it that doesn't have the design drawn on it. Um, and I've put some double stick tape down. And you can see I did one wire just to practice, you know, because doing this stuff live is kind of nerve wracking. Um, and what else? So double stick tape. These are my cloisonne wires right here. And like I said, I make my own cloisonne wires. Um, because I like to have a lot of control over the height and the width. Uh, and what I do is I purchase uh, just straight up round wire. This is a piece of gold round wire, 24 gauge. Uh, you can buy one gauge and mill it down to different gauges. I tend to just buy 22, 24, 26, and 28 um, as needed. Um, a 24 gauge is going to give me a slightly thicker, you can't tell in this, which piece is the little thicker one, um, but one of these, this one right here, is made out of this wire right here. And the other thinner wires are made from 26 gauge, and those are these right here, and I can tell just by feeling them, they're a little bit floppier. But what I like about these wires is, um, because I, I just put them through the rolling mill myself, um, there are different thicknesses, but they're the same height, which is really important, um, especially when you're doing gold, because you don't want it to be too tall that you're wasting a lot of metal. Um, and if they're the both, it's about the same height. Um, if they're about the same height when you're grinding down, um, it's it's easier to see where you are when you're when you're enameling because you can go straight up to the top. And um, what I had determined the height is this is a pay, a piece of just um, scrap. 20 gauge silver, which is what this is, is two pieces of 20 gauge. So I know that the depth in here is the width of this. And so when I'm milling out, milling out is probably not the right word, rolling out my wires, I just kind of hold it. And I just want it to be ever so slightly exactly the same width as this. Or I can't turn the autofocus off, by the way, because I tried. It doesn't let you do it through the, the Facebook app. But anyway, um, you can see it's exactly uh, the width of that. And I don't measure it with like a measuring tool. I just eyeball it because, you know, as long as it's slightly taller, um, you're going to be just fine. There's no sense in like, there's enough anal stuff in cloisonne. Let's not take it to the extreme. So anyway, so I've got this little thicker piece. Boop. And I've got these thinner pieces. I know we haven't even gotten to any bending of the wires. And I'm going to talk about tools next um, for bending wires. Um, I pretty much have kind of a set of regular pliers. I've got two sets of round nose pliers here. Um, these are nice Lindstrom pliers. They're, they're nice. Um, they have a little bit narrower, two round nose things narrower, and then I have one that's a little bit thicker um, for making uh, slightly bigger ones. For when I'm making the tiniest of little circles, these are kind of like the best thing. Anywho, oh, and snippers. These are flush nose pliers. And if you're going to spend money on one single tool and close an enamel, I would totally uh, put your money into this tool because um, these are Swanstrom as well. And um, what's nice about these is they're going to pinch on one side, but the other side is perfectly smooth. So you'll get a really nice, when you're cutting your wire, um, you're going to get a really nice flush cut, hence. The, the term flush cut pliers um, and then some flat pliers and then I have two pairs of tweezers that I use all the time um, and you can see that they're uh, a hook nose tweezer 
and a straight nose tweezer, tweezer. Um, and they are just good for moving everything around. Um, this I like to, uh, you can do real nice little bends with these. Um, don't skimp on your tweezers and don't ever use them for soldering um, because this is what happens when you use them for soldering. This is my soldering pair of tweezers is they get all nasty and that's not really going to work. Well, it might work for some basic work. Anywho. All right, so let's get started. Woohoo! Now, I've got these wires. I've got my little circle. And so I, I like to kind of start on the simple, um, the simple pieces right here. So I know I've got a circle right here. And I kind of work on it both at the same time. Because if you're making two things, you might as well make each component um, one right after the other. And then that's how you're going to get two matching things. And so I pretty much... The other go-to thing when you're doing bending wires is you have a thousand different things that you can wrap wires around. Um, I have like a whole set of these things you can't even see, but I'm going to show them. Like they're just regular um, drill bits, and I use them. And I also have a ton of these um, dapping things in every different size because I really I never use them for dapping. Well, I don't use it a lot for dapping, um, but they're really good widths for wrapping wire around because when you're making really nice gentle curves you want them to be perfect and you can't really do that with just bending um, it's good to bend things around anywho do i say anywho too much now i'm all nervous so i feel like i'm on tv um so let's get started so i would already decided that this was a good i'm gonna try to do it right here for this circle and you can see that there's always going to be a little bit of um i tend to um I like to have kind of springy wires, and when I run the wire through the rolling mill, they come out a little bit springy, which I find to be good. Um, if you get uh, ready-made cloisonne and I'm from like Rio, it's fine, but it tends to be super soft, and so every tiny little kink shows up. And so, uh, but when it's a little springy, it's going to kind of roll around there and it's going to relax back. So I always kind of, when I'm doing a circle, I choose choose a form that's just slightly smaller. And so I was going to use this the thicker wire because just for this piece I want the thicker I just want a tiny little thickness right in the center and so let's see if I can do this I usually have like my nose right up and I'm just gonna wrap it around oh and the gold's really nice because the gold is a little bit less springy I don't know if you can see this or not oh my goodness and so basically I've made a little thing, and then I can t use my fingers to close it. This is now just like a jump ring, just like a jump ring, la la la. And then I can just, I can fiddle with these a little bit later. So there we go, now we have our little tiny thing. And I'm going to put this thicker wire kind of aside because I'm not going to use that again unless I decide to. Um, so we're gonna make this tiny little curly cue in the center of there, which is super easy. Um, and you can see I've kind of cut the wires into more manageable. When I put, you know, when I pull it out of the rolling mill, it's like three feet long. Um, I don't like to have a lot of extra wire just hanging out. Um, it's easier to work with. I mean, I might even cut this piece in half again, just because it's, it's a lot easier to work with. Um, and so I'm going to make a tiny little curly cue. This is probably one of those things where a macro lens would be very handy. Um, so, and I just kind of started with a little thing. I know I'm being very descriptive. It's hard to do it with the camera right there. Um, but you can kind of see I've made a little curly cue like that. And I don't need to go much. Oh, goodness. And I can relax that. Let me get my little snippers. And I got my things. And seriously, half the thing is just not letting these things get away from you. I'm all shaky. And then I'm just going to put that right inside there to be like the center of our little curly cue right there. And let's make one more of those. And pretty much, 
you can see I've got all of these designs here. This is pretty much my day. Um, and it's a lot easier to do it when I don't have like a camera right there. Um, with these pieces, I don't really need to use my jewelry microscope because I can kind of see, obviously I'm wearing my glasses, but I can kind of see what's going on without too much assistance, especially with these real simple designs. Uh, too much coffee this morning. Set that right there. There we go. And you can see, got that piece. Now let's make um, these little, this I should start with like simpler design, um, these four tiny little leaves. Um, this is one of those things that I figured out the easiest way to make um, that this kind of shape. Um, the thing. Let me tell you the shape that we're going to make. To make this shape right here, it's kind of two halves, like two semicircles, is to start with a larger circle. So I have this metal rod, which is slightly bigger, and you can kind of experiment and see what size. And I'm going to do it like I was going to make a circle. Just wrap that around, because I know I need to have eight of those puppies, so I'm going to do it like I'm... Actually, these are probably going to be too big, but... Um, should probably also should have done silver wire just because I'm going to waste a lot just because. That's actually too big, but that's okay because we can just pick out a different size. This is a, maybe a better size drill bit. It's way too small. Or this one. Yeah. And I'm going to switch to the other side. I'll fix those later. That's why it's good to have two sides. Yeah, this will be a better size. So we're going to wrap that around. And I like wire wrapping because it has a lot of problem solving involved. It's like putting a puzzle together, trying to figure out the best way to create a shape. So, anywho. anywho let me see. Are we getting bored yet? And I can hear people in the hallway. Oh, my studio is open to the public. So if people come in and I start talking to them. Oh, I guess I have to be in front of the camera for you to see it. So I'm making some little circles and they've rolled away. And so what I like to do is, let me see. These are stuck together. didn't come in. That's fine. It's Friday too. We, if people are going to come in, it's going to be on a Friday. All right, so I've got the same thing. It's almost like I was making those things. That took far too long. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close it like a little jump ring. And, and then I'm going to cut it in half. Let's see. Maybe not quite. I can't even get in there. These are going to be... This is one of those things where it's like, you just kind of have to guess. And here's where I'm going to use these straight, lovely, um, stiff things. And I'm just going to take it, let's see if you can see it, and I'm just going to bend it with my fingers to close it. I didn't quite bend it in the, in the center, but you can see now I have the tiniest little leaf shape. And, you know... I'm going to call that a success considering I don't normally do this in front of an audience. Does this count as an audience? Oh, and you can see I probably could have. Oh, and there we go. There is one. And just stick that on. And that's why this double stick tape is so good because it's like nothing's, things can't really escape for the most part. Um, so there's one. And let's make another one while we're doing it. Um, And it's good to keep track of your scrap. I usually kind of work on a clean piece of white paper. There's a lot of visual stuff happening, like this bird keeps talking to me. Um, that bird is like the voice of my conscience saying, do it, 
do it, bend the wires. It's a good voice. So, I hope you can see. I'm trying to figure out where it is. So, the light is in the way. Let's do that. I don't know if I'm really selling these bending of the wires as being a really fun thing, but one thing that's fun to do, oh, I didn't do that one right, while you're bending wires is you can listen to books on tape. So you can be learning and bending at the same time. Um, I guess I should be, let's see, telling you more things about bending wires while I'm bending wires. And you can see that was a little bit floofy. So I'm gonna trim that a little bit. Save that bit. And if I were doing this on my own, I would have had all these all of these little guys done by now. So there's another one. All right, so I'm gonna move on to a different shape because you don't probably wanna watch me do all those little leaves. We'll do those later, just because. Um, I think that the next thing I'm gonna do are these little, little tendrils. And if you know anything about cloisonne, um, you know that straight lines are problematic just because they tend to you know, tip over. Uh, it, so you always wanna consider uh, I mean, you can definitely do straight lines, and there's there's ways to, to do the straight lines. Um, but one way to do is try to incorporate two shapes into one. So I know this looks like a line and a circle, but really I'm going to make it a circle and a line. So I'm going to get my very dainty round nose pliers. And let's see. And I'm just going to make... I feel like I've made a tiny little circle. Yeah, wires. And then I'm just going to bend it back a little bit so that it looks like a tiny little shape. And you can see the shape. And I tried to, you know, cut things just a little extra long because you can always trim some off. But it's harder to, obviously, add things. Oh my goodness. So are like bloopers. Oh, and these videos, seriously. You're still in the beta thing. I gotta figure out what people even want to see. That's probably far too long, but you know what? We're just gonna let it be for now. Let's see. Oh, a little too long, so we'll trim it one more little thing. And sometimes I set it on the little sticky bit to hold it in place while I trim it, which is a little bit wasteful because all this gold save that is pretty expensive. But oh my gosh, I could work with gold every day. So we've got that little piece right there. Boop. And you can see we're getting a little closer. Um, I guess we could take a little break and I could show you this was on my Facebook page yesterday, but it's sitting right here. So remember yesterday when I was cutting this piece out right here? Um, there's not much going on. It's just a, a piece of silver, but you can kind of see that it's going to be, this is the design. And here are the wires that I've already done for that. Hold on. They're stuck over here. You can see that here are the wires that go for this piece right here. And it's gonna have a little stone in it. Um, not sure exactly if that's gonna be the, the orange stone. I was gonna do the enamels and see what color um, was gonna look good. So you can basically see where we're going. Um, got the wire work done here. I've got the base done. Um, the next step for the base would be to, um, I'm gonna do some texturing of it to kind of mimic the, um, the scales. In fact, you can see on that scrap piece I had which is floating around that I was, which is completely gone. But um, the scrap piece, I was doing a little bit of texture on it to, do, to come mi mimic the scales. Um, so anyway, so that is project for tomorrow, but that is good. All right, I guess that was kind of like a word from our sponsor. And you can see I'm, I'm gonna lose that. So say goodbye to that piece for now, for now. Um, and, 
Yes, I think that's probably good. Let's see. Do we want to bend more wires? I don't even know. Um, yeah, we'll bend some more wires. Because it's one of those things where it's, I'm not sure if it's interesting to see or if it's very not interesting to see. All right, so this next thing that I'm going to do is just this shape right here, which is more of a U shape, um, which is also a very easy shape to do. Um, I think this is actually, see this, this particular drill bit is my go-to drill bit for this piece. And I'm just going to, instead of bending it straight around, I'm just going to bend it to be a U shape. And I can use my fingers. Your fingers are the best tool of all. Um, of course it's a little too short, but it's just a little bit more. kind of see I hold it right there and things and I'm gonna trim it right on there and right on there and all these little tiny bits don't worry we're gonna save those it's gold so and what I can do to kind of straighten this edge if that's a little bit is I can take my tweezers and just kind of doopity doop like that and then we're just going to set that right there and I can see I can probably even make it a lot shorter than that but here are my flat nose oops I like that let me turn it a little bit Oh, I can see that people are leaving messages because I can see the phone because I can look down into it. So if you have any questions, I could answer them at this point, even if it's not about exactly what I'm doing because I'm not sure that this is all that exciting. There we go. Oh, there we go. And you know, it's even a little long, um, but you know what? That's fine because when I transfer to the piece, I might do the final trim. I hate to over trim things. And then when um, I'm putting it on the final piece, I find that I over trims it a little bit because I'm also going to dome this ever so much, which is going to kind of expand the, the surface area. So I'd rather have it be just a little too long um, right now. And then when I'm putting the wires in place later, um, that's when I'll do the final trim. Or is that just an excuse not to do that one? But let's see. Let's do another one of those. Oh, hold on, I see a question. See, and of course, like the, oh, you know, it's all the thing. The little holder is blocking the view. What is the width of the cloisonne wire, says Francis. Oh, um, well, to be honest, I guess I could measure it, but I go by, I know that I'm using 20 gauge, um, uh, 20 gauge wire to create these. This is two sheets of 20 gauge wire, and here's like a piece of scrap, 20 gauge. And what I do is when I am rolling my wires out, because I rolled this out using a piece of 28 gauge, uh, 24 karat gold wire, I just hold it up to the edge and I want it to be almost exactly the same width, if not just a hair taller. Because also you have to think that I'm also going to be, oh, right there, I'm also going to be putting a layer of enamel down before I even put these wires on top. So um, if it's exactly the same width, it's probably going to be just fine. And so um, I don't fuss too much about 0. .000 inches or millimeters or anything like that. Um, I That is another reason why it's, it's nice to have a rolling mill so you can just roll out your own wires and you can have them whatever width and whatever height that you want. And as I was saying earlier, I've got two, actually two kinds of wire here and you can't really tell from the video. Um, this was uh, 24 gauge and it's a little bit thicker and you can't really tell right now but you'll be able to tell in the final piece that that line is a little bit thicker. It gives you um, a little bit more control over the design, just one more element that you can do. So that was the, end of the question. All right, what was that? 
Oh, Rupali says, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Sorry, Rupali. Uh, oh, hey, Rupali, by the way. How will you set the stone? Oh, yes. Well, this is one of those things that I kind of, I think I've got it figured out. Um, I haven't actually set a stone. Um, so here's my plan. Um, I am going to, let me get that piece back. I've got this. Um, oh, and let me get a piece of paper because I might want to draw it out. Um, let's just see. Um, what I'm going to do is, and I don't know if it's going to work, but I, I think it's going to be fine. Um, uh, I'm going to drill a hole through it. There's my hole. Oops. And then I'm going to, um, basically I'm going to drill a hole. And I'm going to add another piece of silver right there. And then I'm going to set the, I've got a, this is a tube setting right here which is going to hold the stone, um, which might be this stone. I like this little fire opal. It's kind of a pretty orange um, thing. Um, and I'm going to basically solder this onto a tube. So it's going to be like, here's my tube setting. And here's going to be the pretty little stone, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, I'll set the stone last. Um, and then I'm going to solder a tube like this. And then I'm going to, after I've done all of the enameling, but I've pre-drilled the hole and I'm probably going to put a little bit of a, a silver around it to kind of, so it's not going to be um, right up against the, the enamel. Um, after I've done the entire thing, and I should probably have tested this instead of doing it on this, but I like to go for, for broke when I try new things. Um, I'm going to stick this through. It'd be like the last thing I've done. The whole piece is totally done. And then I'm going to trim it a little bit and then just that, you know, flare these out so it's just basically a, a rivet setting um, and it'll be like right in there like that. Um, I will keep you posted on how that's going to work out because in my mind it's going to work out beautifully, but we'll find out. So that was that question. All right. Anywho, so I think that is good for now. Um, let me know if you have feedback. I wasn't sure, I know we had some feedback about the autofocus, which I could do on my camera, but doing it through the Facebook thing, I wasn't sure, um, I couldn't figure out how to do it, because you're supposed to hold the thing and turn it off. So if it's still autofocusing, I apologize, I'll have to go back and do that again. And um, maybe I was thinking of doing kind of a live thing once a week, unless you think that's too much, or if you want it every day, that might be too much for me, uh, because Seriously, I would have done all these wires by now. Not that that's bad, but I'm going to be spending the day working on all these wires. And look, check out this little kitty, too. She's going to be really sweet. You can't even see. Here's, here's the little kitty. She's going to be sweet. Oh, and I have the other thing is you can see. Oh, I, actually, I don't have that one. Um, but with. Anywho, so I was going to show you some more stuff, but then I decided not to. So that is it for now. Thank you for coming, and I guess I can wave. There's my fingers, and um, thanks again. All right, I'm saying goodbye now.